Hey there, how's it going? In the last asset pack video, I made a cute skeleton and I asked you to leave a comment for future characters to make. Of course, the most requested thing was not a character but a tile map and I'm afraid I'm not quite ready to tackle that yet. I started this as a character asset pack because that's what I enjoy making the most and I'm going to keep it that way for a little while longer. Although as we get more characters, I will start thinking about what to make for terrain. Other than that, there were several other suggestions that were really close to the number of comments. So to be diplomatic about it, I put it to a vote in the YouTube community tab and wizard slash mage won by a large margin. I did see a few comments of people saying not to pick that because I've already made a mage character for my game tread carefully and they'd rather see me do something different. But with over 50% of the vote, I can't just not do it. So instead of going for a hooded mage like I've done before, let's switch it up and make a wizard with a mighty beard instead. Making the skeleton as my first humanoid character worked out great for this, because now I can use it as a base for all characters in the future that have that shape. And presumably the wizard's going to have a skeleton, unless the spell has gone horribly wrong. I started by adding flesh to the head and figuring out features like the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. I began the beard with a big mustache and used that to determine how large the beard itself should be in relation. Now, I plan to give the character a classic wizard hat, but the balding look was just too good not to leave in, even if it's not really seen in the final sprites. Wizards wear robes, so I was able to block in a big blotch of color with a rough idea of where the hand's gonna be, and then start adding some shading and refining. There aren't that many pixels on the body to work with since the beard is covering up so much of it, so I just give the illusion of folds using the main color and some shadow, as well as throwing on a belt for good measure. On the head, I went for a classic big floppy Gandalf-like hat. And I'm a big Tolkien fan, so there were definitely inspiration taken from the Grey Wizard here. And all in all, I think the look came together pretty well. With the base design of the character figured out, it's time to start animating. I've mentioned this in the past, but I do all of my designing in Photoshop, because that's the tool that I've just worked with the longest and I'm the most comfortable using. But I do really dislike the animation tools that Photoshop has to offer, so let's get this guy over into A-Sprite and get him moving. And as we do that, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot, who sent me one of their Suchan ergonomic chairs to try out. I've always struggled with not having good posture, and I sit at my desk quite a bit, especially while streaming. The 3D lumbar system and adjustable seat depth are great for keeping me from slouching while working. And when the work is done, I can lean back, adjust the armrest, and get a little gaming done before bed. It was incredibly easy to assemble, taking less than 15 minutes from box to build. I've been using the chair for the last few weeks now, and I've been super happy with it for both work and play. FlexiSpot makes quality ergonomic products to help people lead healthier and more productive lives now. Check them out with the link in the description and see what a difference it can make today. With the character designed, I separate each of the moving elements out into their own layers. For this character, I broke them into a body, foreground arm, background arm, head, and hat. I find this approach incredibly valuable to help block out where the movement's going to go, having all the pieces separate so I can move them, and then later go back in and make finer pixel adjustments where I need to. And we use it right away by setting up the head bob movement for the idle animation. Once I like it, I then go back through the frames and move elements like the mustache and the beard. When animating, I take an action then follow approach. If a non-rigid item is attached to a larger item that moves, then the next frame that attached item should move. When the head goes down, the end of the mustache and the beard don't move until the following frame, which makes it feel loose and not rigidly attached to the face. The same approach is then taken for the hat. I get the whole hat moving rigidly along with the head, and then I add some floppiness to areas furthest away from the head, like the brim of the hat and the top. The body for the idle pose is pretty simple here, and I don't want to make it attract the eye too much because I don't want to pull the focus away from the beard and the hat, which I think are more interesting things for the players to look at, and the easier read when the sprite is in the game. Those that know my work know that I usually leave arms off my characters because for some reason they're always just a pain for me to animate. But because this is something I'm doing to learn on top of giving something out to the community, I can't let myself just not put arms on this character. I started by trying to just move the whole arm frame by frame and in the end it just didn't really work super well. But I did find that making a rough hand shape and then animating just that circle moving around helped a lot. Because that allowed me to get all the placement I needed and then just put in the arm and the sleeve to match the movement that was working. I really didn't expect walking in robes to give me such trouble, but I fought with this for a really good while. I had to cut out all of my failed attempts at the walk cycle because honestly, even with the speed up, it would have taken far too long to show it all. But in the end, I was able to add a bit of a consistent pattern to the front of the robes and then animate that moving along with the edges to get something that came out pretty well. With pixel art, sometimes it's just trial and error until something looks right, and this was one of those times for me. I always make animations in a similar order because it allows the work to speed up as I go. 
By starting with the idle and the run, that gives me a lot of different elements in different positions that I can pull from to create all of the other animations that I need to, saving a lot of time in redrawing. The jump and fall animations, for example, pull in elements from different frames of the walk and run cycle to make a new shape that works out well for what we need. Doing it this way, I now get a nice head start and only have to make minor tweaks to make it all fit together. I added a fun frame on the fall where the robes pop up a little bit and you can see the wizard's shoes sticking out from underneath. It really isn't necessary, but I find it kind of adorable, and it helps give a glimpse that there are actually legs underneath there. Like the skeleton, this will be a projectile throwing enemy, so I followed the same steps of having the character lean back in anticipation frames, and then lean forward again with the arms out to throw the spell. During the animation, I make the eyes change color and the spell form around the hands as they move. The spell grows during the lean back and then has a nice smear as the hands move forward to help sell that the spell is moving quickly. And to add a little more power to it, I made the mustache and the hat brim flutter as if there was so much wind and energy coming off of the spell. Added in a little squint to the eyes to show that the wizard is exerting some force, and that's a fun little attack animation, I think. For the death, I didn't want to do anything gory. I really liked what I did with the skeleton where the head falls on top of the pile of bones, so I kind of tried it again. This is a wizard after all, and it's kind of magical, so it does make sense that when it dies it gets sucked up into its own hat, right? Well if you answered no, too bad, because that's what I did, and I honestly love it. Then I made the hit animation, which is basically just the beginning part of the death animation, and as I did with the skeleton, I made a flashing and non-flashing version. I then made a separate sprite for the projectile as well, and finally, like with the slimes, I added a couple of color variations, and that'll do it. This is the wizard in the end. It can stand idle, run, jump and fall, attack, die, and get hit. The pack on my itch page has been updated and it's ready to grab if you're interested. There's a link in the description. And as always, you're free to use the asset however you choose and credit is not necessary but will be appreciated. I just ask that you don't sell or redistribute the assets and link people back to the page if they're looking for it. I'm really enjoying making characters for this pack and I'm learning a lot. I really do think this is one of the best animation sets I've ever done. Be sure to leave your suggestions for the next character in the comments below and be sure to upvote the ones that you like. Bat and Spider were right up there last time with people really wanting to see either a flying enemy or just to torture me by making me deal with all those legs. While you're at it, please give the video a like if you've enjoyed this and click the subscribe and bell button if you haven't already. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my Patreon supporters for help making this kind of content happen. Especially Cinnabunny, Clone13, Cortland Massam, David Scott, Nightfall, It's Jeppy, Jed Jed, Kevin Haugau, Kormai, MLK, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all awesome people, and I truly can't thank you enough for the support. Thank you again for watching. If you would like to get into contact with me, the best place to do that would be on my live streams at twitch.tv slash vimlark. We also have a Discord server with loads of amazing people. One final thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and for sending me the chair. I absolutely love it. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening, whatever it is for you. I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.